rossy parts here. Here we've got a uh, definitely rossy. Have some old. Here we've got a, uh, a Rossi. Let y'all see what we're going to do here. We're going to pull this little thing apart and uh, find out what's wrong with it. Evidently, whenever you cycle the hammer, sometimes it will only work if you lean the hammer a certain direction. See there? Now watch if I do it with my left hand. <laughs> so if you tilt the hammer to the right hand side well let's see here maybe if you go straight back it doesn't rotate the cylinder. If you tilt it, lean the hammer, it does. So we're going to pull it out apart and find out what's wrong. Sorry about the compressor. There we go. Want to make sure that you have the screwdrivers that fit. Boy, these are loose. All three of those are the exact same. On a lot of your pistols, this one will be different but on this one it happens to be there the same. Now what I'm going to do here is you can see right in there I'm going to you can take whatever works for you. Back here this is going to be covered up with a grip so you know you, you've got a little room to work. There we go. I just kind of gave it a little twist. There we go. There you go. And to see how this all works, when you cock it, this is what actually spins, rotates your cylinder right here. See that right there? That should be a double action. Right down in there is your sear and for some reason it's being allowed to skip forward. It should have the strength to stay in place there but instead it's falling so either the spring is bad or the parts are worn. So now we know two problems that this gun has. Let me 
make sure that see if we have any parts that are really loose We'll go ahead and remove the cylinder now since you have this screw out which was the front screw on your cover plate press the button forward there and this will come right out of there we can disassemble that further just a little bit later And for your mainspring, maybe a better way of doing this. But what I am going to do is just grab a hold of it with some pliers. And I grabbed it right up here and pull down. And there you go. That right there is a separate piece. Doesn't have to come out. I mean, you know, unless it was cracked or broken. We'll know about that after it comes out of the ultrasonic. A lot of times the ultrasonic cleaner will really make stuff like that show up. Now here, don't forget about this little piece. This is the bottom spring cup. It goes down in there. Now we'll move these out of the way. And we'll go ahead and get our hammer out of the way. And whenever, once you've got your cylinder out, the hammer won't cock. Move your cylinder release slide back, and that'll let your hammer move. What that does, you've actually got a, a locking block right there. That's part of the release for your cylinder. And there you go. And I'm going to get the tip of this underneath one side. Here's your pivot pin right there. And then I just take the hammer and just wiggle it up. Just work it up. There we go. See it coming? That click was the sear flipping up. And that was the trigger slapping back down. Again, someone that's a Rossi certified guru might have a better way of doing this, but this is the way that I'm doing it. And so with this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the trigger and pull it. And I'm going to put my pliers right here on the end of this pin and right here. To try and release the trigger. That didn't work. Now, so here's the spring. We're under tension here. So, go ahead and put something over this. There we go.
goes in there just like that. Now I can take the trigger and work it up. We'll worry about all these small internal parts here in a minute. Looks to me like the problem, well that, that is a problem right there, that's worn through. That could be part of the reason about the hammer being cocked one or the other, this not actually latching. Now what I did just then was I took this scribe, I got it down in there, and I pressed down on this part and hooked it, because you have to get it pushed down and slide it between here and this pin in order to get it up and out of there. Now there's a spring right down here too, so watch out for that spring. There we go. We have a small screw there. There we go. little dirt a little bit of dirt is in there pretty pretty tight I hope you can see what I'm doing I'm using this to pry that bar this way and then I'm using this one to pry the end of that bar up. Now I'm going to go underneath. There we go. Let's see. Move the camera down so you can see this parts that just came out of there. There you go. More small parts. I'm going to zoom in on this trigger here. I don't know if you can see that pin in there. It's a little crooked. The spring is pushing that down. So, what I'm going to do Move 
that there. See if I can relieve that spring tension off of that little bitty pin. teeny tiny pin and that pin rode in that little slot there and that little spring was on it see how strong these components are A little bit longer pin. There we go. Show the orientation. Go back the other way here a little bit and see if we make any better progress. There we go. wanted to compare these pins and those pins are going to be the same there's that little piece and now the trigger is disassembled I'm just going to throw all these parts back up here real quick those are all trigger components that's all part of the trigger assembly that's amazing that that's all out of this little bit trigger it'll probably become a full unit whenever I get a replacement part for it but either way go ahead and tear it down here we go we'll disassemble the hammer get the sear out And that sear's got a spring in there. Get your little spring out. Yeah, you can see here. That's a sear. It's definitely worn. Definitely need a new sear. 
Now, we've got our little firing pin here that we're going to remove. Let's see. There we go. The problem I was having is the width here was causing it to get sideways. Get another use for a primer tray. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Punch that one all the way through. There's all of your hammer parts. Sears definitely bad firing pin it's worn but I'm not sure how long the firing the original firing pin was supposed to be so we'll have to do a little research on that now to rem remove and disassemble your cylinder really I can just take this and pull it clean clean off of there this up some but I'm just gonna have to put some pliers on it and notice the part of the pliers that I'm using here is right there there's no teeth there it's just a good solid grip and I'm not getting right towards the end because if I get too far to the end it's it's recessed and it'll squeeze in the end there so I want to get far enough back that I'm on the internal shaft and you really want to have this down like it is now because if you see you can see right there and there those are two little alignment pins and those will help with retention for this whenever you loosen it up I had already broken it loose that's why it was so easy but it it was much tighter than that and just loosen it and center a little bit of spring tension but not much and this does have a keyway has, it's keyed. Got a spring there. Check the orientation here on this. And that's all your parts from your um, cylinder and arm. All the Rossi parts here.
you can tell <clears throat> definitely have some old solution in there. And that's that. We'll just let it go for a while. Yeah, you can already see it starting to swirl in there. And we just finished uh, the cycle. I usually like to have it running when I pull stuff out. That way if I need to dip something in again a little bit, I can without having any issues. I like to give things a good scrub. You can see there's something black on these grips. We'll see how well it cleans up later. I'll worry about it. When you get stuff out with a magnet, a lot of times you pick up trash. 